acrid stench of burnt metal assaulted Sergeant Caleb Mortensen's nostrils as he pried open the escape pod's hatch. Smoke billowed from the crumpled remains of his ship, scattered across the desolate alien landscape. Fan-fucking-tastic, he muttered, surveying the crimson horizon stretching before him, marooned on planet bumfuck nowhere, with nothing but my dashing good looks. Caleb ran a hand through his chestnut hair and straightened his tattered tactical jacket. The planet's twin suns glared down on him like judgmental in-laws, making him acutely aware of the sweat snaking between his shoulder blades. He checked his wrist computer, hoping for some shred of good news, but the flickering screen just taunted him with error messages. Okay, Caleb, you've gotten out of worse scrapes than this, he lied to himself, forcing his feet forward across the cracked earth. Just find some shelter, forage for space rats, and wait for extraction. Easy peasy. He trudged towards a cluster of twisted rock formations in the distance, his mind drifting to cold beers and greasy burgers back on Earth. But his pity party was cut short by a flash of movement in his periphery. Caleb spun around, hand flying to the plasma pistol at his hip. Who's there? He called out, scanning the alien brush. I come in peace and all that jazz, but I'm not afraid to blast an extraterrestrial mud hole in your ass. Silence. Then a figure emerged from behind a jagged boulder. Mortensen's jaw went slack. Standing before him was a woman. Well, a femaleish being. Cerulean skin, pointed ears, obsidian hair cascading down her back. She wore a patchwork of tattered fabrics that left little to the imagination, her lithe form adorned with intricate alien jewelry that glittered in the harsh sunlight. But most striking of all, was the massive baby bump protruding from her midsection. She looked like she'd swallowed a basketball, a very sexy basketball. Well, hello there, Caleb said, his voice an octave higher than usual. I'm Sergeant Caleb Mortensen, United Earth Space Corps, and you are... The alien woman tilted her head, studying him with luminous amber eyes. Then in a voice like honeyed whiskey, she spoke. I am Lorraine, last female of the Vornax tribe. You will mate with me, Earthman. Caleb blinked, then blinked again. I'm sorry, what? My people are dying, Lorraine said, taking a step closer. You are the first virile male to land here in generations. You must help me repopulate this world. Caleb held up his hands, backing away slowly. Whoa there, baby mama. I'm flattered, really. But you can't just go around demanding strangers knock you up. That's not how we do things where I'm from. Lyron's brow furrowed. You would refuse the sacred duty of propagating your seed? Propagating my... No, I mean not right off the bat, Caleb sputtered. There's got to be some romance, you know? Candlelit dinners, long walks on the beach, pretending to care about each other's feelings. The alien woman stepped closer, her eyes narrowing. I do not understand your mating rituals, Earthman, but I will not be denied. You will give me your offspring, or... Or what? You'll probe me to death? Lyrain hissed, bearing razor-sharp fangs. Caleb yelped and stumbled backwards, tripping over his own feet. He scrambled away from her, heart pounding against his ribs. Okay, okay, let's all just calm down, he said, holding up his hands in surrender. No need to get bitey. I'm sure we can come to some sort of arrangement. The alien woman loomed over him, her pregnant belly casting a shadow across his face. You have no choice, Earthman. You are mine now. Caleb swallowed hard, his mind racing. He was no stranger to sticky situations, but this was a whole new level of absurdity. Knocked up by a thirsty blue alien with an impregnation fetish? Not exactly how he'd imagined his day going. But as he stared up at Lorraine's fierce, strangely beautiful face, a flicker of curiosity ignited in his chest. What would it be like to mate with a creature from another world? To create life in the most primal sci-fi porno way possible? Part of him was tempted. A very stupid, reckless part. The part that had gotten him court-martialed twice and accidentally engaged to a Venusian stripper. But the rational side of his brain, the side that valued things like consent and not getting his manhood bitten off, won out. Listen, Liren, he said, slowly rising to his feet. I get that you're in a tough spot, and believe me, under different circumstances, I'd be all for making little green babies with you, but this isn't right. We barely know each other. The alien woman's stance softened, confusion clouding her features. But you are male. I am female. Is that not enough? Caleb sighed, running a hand through his hair. 
I wish it were that simple, but where I come from, there's got to be more to it than just bumping uglies. There's got to be a connection, you know? A spark. Lorraine stared at him, her head cocked to the side. A spark, she repeated, as if tasting the word for the first time. I do not understand, but I, I will try, for the sake of my people. She took a step back, giving Caleb some much-needed breathing room. He let out a shaky laugh, relief flooding his system. Great, that's great. So, uh, how about we start with something simple, like telling me more about yourself, your planet, your baby daddy situation. Lyraine nodded slowly. Very well, Earthman. I will share my story, but know this. I will have your seed inside me, one way or another. Caleb gulped, his heart skipping a beat. What the hell had he gotten himself into? Little did he know, this was just the beginning of the strangest, sexiest, most batshit insane adventure of his life. An adventure full of danger, desire, and the dawning realization that maybe, just maybe, love could bloom in the most unlikely of places. Even on planet bumfuck nowhere, with the galaxy's thirstiest baby mama. Caleb followed Lorraine through the alien landscape, picking his way over jagged rocks and sun-baked earth. His mind was still reeling from their earlier encounter, struggling to process the fact that this smoking hot extraterrestrial was not only pregnant, but apparently had a litter of kids running around somewhere. So, uh, you mentioned something about your people dying out, he said, wiping the sweat from his brow. What's the deal with that? And where's the baby daddy? Or daddies, I guess. Lyraine glanced back at him, her amber eyes flickering with something like sadness. The males of my species were wiped out by a virulent plague many cycles ago. I have been forced to mate with passing travelers to keep our lineage alive. Caleb let out a low whistle. Damn, that's rough. But what about the fathers of your kids? They just hit it and quit it? The alien woman shook her head. They did not survive the mating process. Caleb stopped dead in his tracks. I'm sorry, what? Lyraine shrugged as if discussing the weather. My pheromones can be... Overwhelming for weaker species. Their hearts gave out before they could fulfill their purpose. Caleb felt the blood drain from his face. And you want to mate with me? Knowing that I could die? You are stronger than the others, Lyraine said, eyeing him appraisingly. I can sense it. You will make a fine sire for my offspring. Whoa, whoa, slow down there, baby mama, Caleb said, holding up his hands. I'm not signing up for a suicide mission. I've got plans, you know, places to go, people to do. Lyraine opened her mouth to respond, but was cut off by a sudden clatter of rocks from behind a nearby boulder. Caleb tensed, reaching for his plasma pistol, but relaxed slightly when three small figures emerged from the shadows. They were children, no doubt about it, but they were unlike any children Caleb had ever seen. Blue-skinned and pointy-eared, with mops of jet-black hair and luminous amber eyes. The spitting image of their mother. They wore little more than tattered shorts, their skinny chests smeared with dirt and what looked suspiciously like blood. One of the boys, slightly taller than the others, stepped forward, a crude spear clutched in his hands. He glared at Caleb, baring his fangs in a hiss. Who is this mother? He demanded, his voice high and reedy. Another weakling come to steal your affections? Lirane laid a hand on the boy's shoulder, her touch gentle but firm. Peace, Varric. This is Caleb, a mighty warrior from the stars. He will be your new father. Caleb's eyes bugged out of his head. Whoa, hey, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. I never agreed to... But the boys were already circling him, their eyes narrowed in suspicion. The smallest one poked at Caleb's leg with a sharp stick, giggling when he yelped in pain. He doesn't look so mighty to me, another boy sneered. I bet he screams like a Vornaxian swamp rat when he dies. Caleb's heart hammered in his chest. These kids were talking about his impending death like it was a foregone conclusion. Like he was just another notch on their hot alien mom's bedpost. He turned to Lyran, desperation clawing at his throat. Listen, I appreciate the offer, but I'm not ready to be a dad. Especially not to a bunch of feral space children who want to use my corpse as a piñata. Lyran's eyes softened, and for a moment Caleb thought he saw a flicker of understanding in their amber depths. But then her gaze hardened and she drew herself up to her full, imposing height. You have no choice, Earthman, she said, her voice ringing with authority. You will mate with me, and you will give me strong, healthy offspring. 
It is the way of my people. The boys closed in around him, their primitive weapons glinting in the harsh alien sunlight. Caleb swallowed hard, his mind racing. He was outnumbered, outgunned, and out of his fucking mind for even considering this. But some primal, lizard-brained part of him couldn't help but be a little turned on by the whole situation. Here he was, stranded on an alien world, being propositioned by the hottest blue chick he'd ever seen. Sure, she had some baggage, namely three homicidal kids and a questionable understanding of consent, but when had he ever been one to back down from a challenge? Caleb squared his shoulders, meeting Lyraine's gaze head on. All right, baby mama, you want a piece of this prime earth beef? Come and get it. The alien woman's lips curled into a predatory smile. Oh, I will, earth man, I will. And with that, she lunged at him, her pheromones hitting him like a freight train. Caleb's knees buckled, his vision swimming as a wave of primal lust crashed over him. He was dimly aware of the boys cheering and whooping in the background, their bloodthirsty cries mingling with the pounding of his own heart. As Lyran's lips crashed against his, her tongue invading his mouth with a ferocity that made his head spin, Caleb had a moment of perfect clarity. This was it. This was how he was going to die. Balls deep in an alien goddess, with her feral brood watching and waiting for their turn. There were worse ways to go, he supposed, but damn if he wasn't going to give them a show they'd never forget. With a growl of his own, Caleb wrapped his arms around Lorraine's waist, pulling her flush against him. If he was going to mate himself to death, he was going to do it on his own terms, with all the swagger and bravado of a true Earth hero. After all, he was Sergeant Caleb fucking Mortensen, and he never backed down from a fight, even if that fight was with his own raging libido, on a planet full of horny blue aliens. Caleb awoke to the feeling of something sharp poking his ribs. He groaned, swatting at the offending object, only to hear a high-pitched yelp of pain. His eyes snapped open, and he found himself staring into the angry face of one of Lyran's sons. Wake up, Earthman, the boy hissed, rubbing his hand where Caleb had smacked him. Mother says it's time for you to prove your worth. Caleb sat up, wincing at the soreness in his muscles. He'd spent the night tangled up with Lyran in a mind-blowing marathon of alien lovemaking, and his body was feeling the effects. But as he looked around the cramped cave they'd taken shelter in, he realized that his problems were just beginning. Lorraine was nowhere to be seen, but her three sons were all staring at him with varying degrees of hostility. The tallest one, Varric, had his arms crossed over his chest, his spear never far from his side. The middle one, who Caleb had mentally dubbed Stabby, was picking his teeth with a sharp bone, his eyes glinting with malice. And the smallest one, who Caleb had taken to calling Bitey, was gnawing on what looked suspiciously like a human femur. Where's your mom? Caleb asked, trying to keep the nervousness out of his voice. And what's this about proving my worth? Varric sneered, his fangs glinting in the dim light of the cave. Mother is out hunting for food. She says that if you are to be our new father, you must show that you can provide for us. Caleb's stomach dropped. Provide for them? He could barely provide for himself, let alone a family of bloodthirsty alien children. He was a soldier, not a hunter-gatherer. But as he looked into the eyes of these strange, feral boys, he felt a stirring of something unfamiliar in his chest. It wasn't quite love, but it was responsibility. These were his kids now, whether he liked it or not. And damn if he wasn't going to do right by them. All right, boys, he said, standing up and cracking his knuckles. Let's go bag us some breakfast. The sons exchanged skeptical looks, but followed Caleb out of the cave and into the harsh alien landscape. The twin suns were just beginning to rise over the horizon, casting everything in a sickly orange glow. Caleb scanned the area, his tactical training kicking in. He spotted a herd of strange six-legged creatures grazing on a patch of luminescent moss a few hundred yards away. They looked like a cross between a deer and a giant cockroach, with shimmering exoskeletons and long whip-like tails. There, he said, pointing. That's our target. Varric scoffed. You expect us to take down a full-grown Vornax beetle? With what, your bare hands? Caleb grinned, reaching into his boot and pulling out a small, cylindrical object. Not quite. He pressed a button on the side of the cylinder, and it expanded into a full-sized plasma rifle, humming with barely contained energy. The boy's eyes widened, their hostility momentarily forgotten in the face of this advanced technology. 
Whoa, Stabby breathed. Can I hold it? Caleb chuckled, ruffling the boy's hair. Maybe when you're older, kiddo. For now, just watch and learn. He crept forward, keeping low to the ground and using the natural cover of the rocks to conceal his approach. The Vornax beetles were oblivious, their mandibles clicking as they stripped the moss from the earth. Caleb took a deep breath, lining up his shot. He exhaled slowly, his finger tightening on the trigger. The plasma rifle kicked against his shoulder, a bolt of searing energy leaping from the barrel and striking the nearest beetle right between its compound eyes. The creature let out a high-pitched shriek, its exoskeleton sizzling as it collapsed to the ground. The rest of the herd scattered, their tails lashing in panic. Caleb stood up, a triumphant grin on his face. He turned to the boys, expecting to see awe and admiration in their eyes. But instead, he was met with looks of pure disgust. You killed it, Bitey said, his voice trembling. You killed it without even giving it a chance to fight back. Caleb's grin faltered. Well, yeah, that's kind of the point of hunting, isn't it? Varric shook his head, his expression hard. Not for us. The Vornax believe in honor, in giving our prey a fair chance. What you did was cowardly. Caleb felt like he'd been slapped. Cowardly? Him? He'd faced down entire armies of enemy soldiers, had run headlong into battles that would make these kids piss their little alien pants. How dare they question his bravery? But as he looked at the dead beetle, its once shimmering exoskeleton now dull and lifeless, he felt a twinge of shame. Maybe they were right. Maybe he had taken the easy way out. He sighed, lowering his plasma rifle. I'm sorry, boys. I didn't mean to disrespect your culture. I'm just... I'm new at this whole alien stepdad thing. To his surprise, Stabby reached out and patted his arm. It's okay, Earthman. You'll learn. Caleb felt a lump form in his throat. Damn these kids for making him feel things. He coughed, blinking away the sudden moisture in his eyes. Right. Well, let's get this beetle back to the cave. Your mom's probably wondering where the hell we are. The boys nodded, their earlier hostility replaced by a grudging respect. Together, they hauled the carcass back to their temporary home, the weight of their strange new family dynamic hanging heavy between them. As they entered the cave, Caleb was surprised to see Lyrian waiting for them, a look of pride on her face. She rushed forward, embracing him tightly. You have proven yourself, my love, she whispered, her breath hot against his ear. You will make a fine father for my sons. Caleb's heart swelled, even as a small part of him wondered what the hell he'd gotten himself into. Fatherhood, alien style. It wasn't exactly what he'd signed up for when he joined the Space Corps. But as he looked at Lyrian, her amber eyes shining with love and desire, and at the boys, their faces a mix of reluctant acceptance and cautious hope, he knew that there was nowhere else he'd rather be. He was Sergeant Caleb Mortensen, intergalactic baby daddy and the baddest motherfucker in the galaxy. And he was going to rock this alien parenting thing, one day at a time. Life on the alien planet had settled into a strange sort of routine for Caleb. By day, he would hunt and gather with Lorraine and the boys, learning the ways of the Vornax and trying his best not to embarrass himself too badly. By night, he would lose himself in Lorraine's passionate embrace, their bodies tangling together in a dance as old as time itself. It wasn't exactly the life he'd imagined for himself, but Caleb had to admit, there were worse places to be than in the arms of a beautiful alien warrior queen. Of course, it wasn't all mind-blowing sex and family bonding. There were plenty of challenges to keep Caleb on his toes, not least of which was dealing with Liren's unpredictable mood swings. You call this a nest? She snarled one morning, kicking at the pile of soft moss and leaves Caleb had painstakingly gathered. My sons have slept on harder ground than this. Caleb bit back a retort, reminding himself that Lyran's hormones were probably going haywire from the pregnancy. I'm sorry, baby. I'll do better next time. Lyran's face softened, and she reached out to caress his cheek. I know you will, my love. You always do. But the peace never lasted long. With three rambunctious boys to wrangle and a pregnant mate to keep happy, Caleb often felt like he was juggling plasma grenades. Varric, put down that spear. Stabby, stop poking your brother with that bone. Bitey, what have I told you about gnawing on my leg? The boys would just cackle and scamper away, leaving Caleb to nurse his wounds and wonder how the hell he'd ended up playing alien super nanny. But for all the chaos and craziness, 
there were moments of pure, unadulterated joy. Like the time Caleb taught the boys how to play catch with a makeshift baseball made from a Vornax beetle shell. All right, kids, watch closely, he said, winding up for the pitch. This is how we do it back on Earth. He let the ball fly, watching with pride as Varric leaped up to catch it with his razor-sharp claws. The boy let out a whoop of excitement, his face splitting into a grin that was all fangs and glee. Nice catch, son, Caleb called out, feeling a sudden rush of paternal affection. Now throw it back to your old man. Varric cocked his arm back, his muscles coiling like a spring. But instead of throwing the beetle shell, he hurled his spear, the deadly point glinting in the alien sunlight. Caleb yelped and dove to the side, feeling the rush of air as the spear whizzed past his head and embedded itself in the cave wall behind him. What the hell, Varric? he yelled, his heart pounding in his chest. You could have killed me? The boy just shrugged, a mischievous glint in his amber eyes. I thought you said to throw it back to you, father. Caleb opened his mouth to argue, but then he saw the way Varric's brothers were laughing and clapping, their faces alight with genuine joy. And damn if that didn't make all the near-death experiences worth it. He shook his head, a rueful grin tugging at his lips. All right, you little monsters, let's see if you can dodge this. He scooped up the beetle shell and charged at the boys, roaring like a Vornaxian war beast. They scattered, shrieking with laughter, as they led him on a merry chase through the twisting tunnels of the cave. And for a moment, Caleb forgot all about the fact that he was stranded on an alien planet with a pregnant mate and three feral stepsons. He forgot about the war raging back on Earth and the countless enemies who would love nothing more than to see him dead. For a moment, he was just a father, playing with his kids, and that was enough. But the moment was shattered by a sudden, piercing scream from deeper within the cave. Caleb's blood ran cold, his instincts kicking into overdrive. Lirayan, he yelled, dropping the beetle shell and sprinting towards the sound. Lirayan, where are you? He burst into the chamber they had claimed as their own, his plasma rifle at the ready. But what he saw made his heart stop in his chest. Lyran was lying on the ground, her face contorted in pain. A pool of viscous blue liquid was spreading out from between her legs, staining the rocky floor. The baby, she gasped, her claws scrabbling at her swollen belly. It's coming. Caleb's mind went blank, his training deserting him in the face of this new and terrifying challenge. He'd faced down entire armies of enemy soldiers, had stared death in the face more times than he could count. But this, this was something else entirely. He was about to become a father, for real this time. And he had no fucking idea what to do. Caleb paced back and forth outside the cave, his heart pounding in his chest. The sounds of Lorraine's screams echoed off the rocky walls, each one feeling like a punch to the gut. He had never felt so helpless in his life. Give him a plasma rifle and a horde of enemy soldiers, and he knew exactly what to do. But this... This was uncharted territory. The boys were huddled together nearby, their faces uncharacteristically solemn. Even Varric, usually so brash and fearless, looked scared. Is mother going to be all right? Bidey asked, his voice small and trembling. Caleb forced a smile, trying to project a confidence he didn't feel. Of course she is, kiddo. Your mom's the toughest lady in the galaxy. She's got this. But as another scream tore through the air, Caleb felt his own confidence wavering. He had never seen Lorraine in so much pain before, not even when she had taken a plasma bolt to the shoulder during a particularly nasty skirmish with a rival tribe. He was just about to charge back into the cave, consequences be damned, when a sudden piercing cry split the air. Caleb froze, his heart leaping into his throat. It was the cry of a newborn baby. He burst into the chamber, his eyes wide and wild. Lyran was lying on a bed of soft moss, her face drenched in sweat but glowing with a fierce maternal pride. And there, cradled in her arms, was the tiniest, most perfect little alien Caleb had ever seen. Congratulations, my love, Lyran said, her voice hoarse but triumphant. You have a daughter. Caleb felt his knees go weak, and he stumbled forward, sinking to the ground beside his mate and child. With trembling hands, he reached out and touched the baby's soft blue skin, marveling at the way she cooed and wriggled in Lorraine's arms. She's beautiful, he whispered, feeling a lump form in his throat, just like her mother. Lorraine smiled, leaning in to press a gentle kiss to his cheek. 
and strong like her father. The boys crowded around, their earlier fear forgotten in the face of this new and wondrous addition to their family. Varric reached out a tentative claw, letting the baby grab hold of his finger with a gurgle of delight. What shall we call her? Stabby asked, his eyes wide with wonder. Caleb and Liren exchanged a glance, a silent conversation passing between them. They had never discussed names, too caught up in the whirlwind of their new life together. But looking at their daughter now, Caleb knew exactly what she should be called. Hope, he said, his voice ringing with conviction. Her name is Hope. Lyraine nodded, her eyes shining with approval. A fitting name for a child born of two worlds. And as Caleb looked around at his strange, wonderful family, his fierce alien mate, his loyal stepsons, and now his precious daughter, he felt a sense of peace wash over him. Sure, they were stranded on a hostile alien planet, with danger lurking around every corner. And sure, he still had no idea how he was going to get back to Earth, or what he would do when he got there. But in that moment, none of that mattered. Because he had something worth fighting for, something worth living for. He had a family, and that was enough. Of course, the peace didn't last long. Because just as Caleb was about to suggest a group hug, a sudden, ear-splitting roar shook the cave to its very foundations. The boys leapt to their feet, their spears at the ready. Lyran clutched hope to her chest, her eyes narrowing in a fierce, protective glare. And Caleb? Well, he just sighed and reached for his plasma rifle. Looks like nap time's over, kids, he said, a wry grin tugging at his lips. Time to show these alien bastards what happens when you mess with the Mortensen family. And with that, he charged out of the cave, his strange but loyal brood right behind him, ready to face whatever the universe had in store for them next, together as a family. The roar was deafening, shaking the very ground beneath their feet. Caleb and his family emerged from the cave, their weapons at the ready, only to be confronted by a sight that made even the battle-hardened soldier's blood run cold. It was a Vornaxian mega-beast, a creature of legend and nightmare. Standing over 50 feet tall with scales as hard as diamond and claws the size of tree trunks, it was a walking apocalypse, a force of pure, primal destruction, and it was heading straight for them. Varric, stabby, bitey, Caleb barked, his voice cutting through the chaos. Get your mother and sister to safety. I'll hold this thing off. The boys hesitated, their loyalty warring with their fear. But a sharp glare from Caleb sent them scurrying back into the cave, half dragging a protesting Lyran behind them. Caleb turned to face the mega beast, his plasma rifle humming with deadly intent. He knew he was outmatched, knew that this was a fight he couldn't possibly win. But he also knew that he had to try, for his family, for hope. The beast roared again, its fetid breath washing over Caleb like a wave of pure, primal terror. He gritted his teeth, planted his feet, and opened fire. The plasma bolts sizzled against the creature's hide, leaving smoking craters in their wake. But the mega beast barely seemed to notice, its massive head swinging from side to side as it searched for its prey. Caleb cursed, dodging a swipe of its claws that would have taken his head clean off. He rolled to the side, coming up in a crouch and firing again, aiming for the beast's eyes, its mouth, anything that looked even remotely vulnerable. But it was like trying to take down a tank with a slingshot. The creature just kept coming, its roars growing louder and more furious with every passing second. And then, just when all hope seemed lost, Caleb heard a sound that made his heart leap into his throat. It was the sound of a Vornaxian war cry, fierce and proud and defiant, and it was coming from behind him. He risked a glance over his shoulder, only to see Varric, Stabby, and Bitey charging out of the cave. Their spears held high, and their faces twisted into masks of pure, primal rage. For mother, Varric bellowed, his voice cracking with emotion. For hope, for the Vornax. The boys swarmed the mega beast, their spears flashing in the alien sunlight. They ducked and weaved around its massive legs, jabbing and slashing at any exposed flesh they could find. The creature roared in pain and fury, its tail lashing out and sending Stabby flying through the air. But the boy just rolled to his feet, his spear never leaving his hand, and charged right back into the fray. Caleb felt a surge of pride and love so strong it nearly brought him to his knees. These were his boys, his brave, stubborn, wonderful boys. And they were fighting for their family, just like he was. 
he let out a war cry of his own and charged forward, his plasma rifle blazing. He aimed for the beast's eyes, its gaping maw, pouring every ounce of his strength and skill into the fight. And slowly, incredibly, the tide began to turn. The mega beast stumbled, its roars turning to whimpers of pain and fear. The boys pressed their advantage, their spears finding chinks in its armor, drawing blood and ichor with every strike. And then, with a final desperate bellow, the creature collapsed, its massive body shaking the earth as it fell. Caleb and the boys stood over it, their chests heaving with exertion and adrenaline. They exchanged glances, their faces splitting into grins of pure, unadulterated triumph. They had done it. They had won. A soft cough from behind them made them turn, and there was Lyran, cradling a sleeping hope in her arms. Her face was a mask of pride and love, her eyes shining with unshed tears. My brave warriors, she whispered, her voice thick with emotion. My beautiful, perfect family. Caleb felt his own eyes grow moist, and he reached out to pull his maiden daughter into a fierce, loving embrace. The boys crowded around them, their spears clattering to the ground as they joined in the hug. And there they stood, on the edge of the final frontier, a family forged in the fires of war and love and sacrifice. They had each other, and that was enough. Years later, when Hope was grown and had children of her own, she would often ask her father to tell her the story of how he had come to their planet, of how he had fallen in love with her mother and become a part of their family. And Caleb would smile, his eyes growing distant with memory as he recounted the tale. He would tell her of the battles he had fought, the enemies he had faced, the sacrifices he had made. But most of all, he would tell her of the love he had found, the love that had saved him from a life of emptiness and despair. Your mother was the bravest woman I ever knew, he would say, his voice thick with emotion. And your brothers, well, they were the toughest, most loyal sons of guns in the whole damn galaxy. Hope would smile, her eyes so like her mother's, and lean in close. And what about you, Dad? What were you? Caleb would chuckle, pulling her into a tight hug. Me? I was just a lucky son of a bitch who stumbled ass backwards into the greatest adventure of his life. And as he held his daughter close, surrounded by the love and laughter of his alien family, Caleb knew that he had finally found his place in the universe. He was home, and he was happy.